Oh, the, it's scheduled to start before end August. <laughs> Welcome here at Pimachin. I see there's a, a monster behind you. <laughs> uh, so last time we talked, we talked about the dream to make a 500cc two-stroke Enduro bike. Please tell me more. To start off with, um, I'm going to keep it short this time because we spent quite a lot of time talking about it last time. The reason for building this thing, developing and building this thing is that Rimpies grew up in the 80s and the uh, guys with the real stuff, they rode 500 two-strokes, enduro bikes, motocross bikes. Yes. But they went out of production because it was basically impossible to ride them. They just had too much horsepower. Dave Salier referred to dial, dial a slide. You know, you can have it in any gear. You whack that throttle and the, the thing just slides. Yeah. The thing is that you can't buy them anymore. And Rimpis, when he enjoyed the sport, he saw it and he had all his heroes. And when he had money to buy one, it wasn't for sale anymore. So now we're in our mid 40s, some of us. <laughs> I'm a little bit older. And he came to me and he said, why not? Let's build one. So we decided to build one. We decided to go next level. We decided to use as much technology as we can afford and we decided to make the engine as current as possible. I think the one thing that makes this bike truly unique out there, I know of one other such a bike. In the mid 80s, the Daytona 500 or the Daytona race in America, they raced uh, the motorbikes on, on, the, on the oval and Yamaha built, I think it was a 680cc YZR for Kenny Roberts to go and compete there. Yeah. And he used it in that one race, and that was it. So this bike is designed and built for one single purpose. Greenpeace is going to do the Roof of Africa Extreme Enduro on it this November, and that's it. Okay, so in terms of rapid prototyping, we use 3D scanning, we use 3D printing. This is a complete... 3D printed engine. This is version 2 by the way. Rimpis uses it to sort out some technical details. You talk about it. So 3D scanning, 3D printing. We use rapid prototype investment casting which gives you a barrel that is near net. And this actually looks like the plastic part but this is the real deal. You knock a guy against the head with it, he'll know about it. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Well, we're going to have all the fancy stuff inside there. So there's an electronically controlled power valve that we can set the, the control of the power valve. Digitally uh, controllable ignition. ignition system. Starter. It's got an electric start in. It's also got a kick start in, in yes. case um, this big buddy drains the battery. So it's got a lot of technology in it. We've also got the uh, pressure reliever of the, the decompression yes, valve. There's yes, there's a decompression valve on the head to assist the starter. Well, that's what I want to say. Yes. Over to Rimpis. I think we, could, we progressed quite well. Like we said, like we said this is version 2 of the, of the design. We, we, we made some, some 3D prints and some scans and some, um, some additional detail. Yes. The big, one of the other big challenges was the barrel. Um, getting the ports in at the right size, the right height, the right shape, the right angle. Um, compared to the water jackets and the water pockets then together with the power valve how to operate it how to connect all those mechanisms and then to fit the gearbox the clutch the water pump the starter the kickstarter uh, on the other side you'll see the hydraulic clutch slave cylinder well show me show me what am i looking at here okay so basically uh, it's a ktm 300 um, this is still the old version the old clutch yeah the newer version's got a smaller clutch but um, for what we want to do that's not a problem the kickstarter shaft with the gears, the water pump, and on the inside you'll see your, your primary drive gear and then also the gear that drives the balancer shaft. And then the other thing that you can see is on the, on the exhaust port side, um, we had to, in order to get the investment or the rapid casting, we had to split it in two. So that you can get access to the power valve, we can get access to the exhaust port. So, oh, okay. so those are some of the things that we did um, on that side. If you come around to the other side, so we went with so the conventional or the, the latest, uh, the newest starter uh, arrangement where the Benix is in line with the crank if you want to call oh, it like okay. that. It's not rotated 90 degrees. We've got the balancer, we've got the hydraulic clutch. 
Um, release. Yeah, we're using the the coils, the coil and magneto from the KTM 300 donor engine. Yeah, and then we've got the the new ignition system. Well, and as you can see, Wimpy's had to cut the frame here to make space for the uh, starter motor. Oh. And uh, <laughs> there's no frame there. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's he's still wobbling at the idea that he has to weld stuff onto his darling KTM. Yeah, so that is unfortunate that we didn't really want to do, um, yeah. but that we couldn't fit the starter with the, the current layout. Okay. So we'll make new. We'll make a new frame um, structural support on that side. And any challenges you had? What what was your biggest? I think. The biggest one is definitely the barrel. The barrel. Yeah, because as as engineers we like straight and round things, and the <laughs> ports is full of round, weird shapes. They're all curved. <laughs> They're all curved. <laughs> like ladies, you know, we love ladies, but to design a lady, only God can do that. So, yeah. uh, so I think that was in terms of the of the modeling and the design was quite difficult. We yeah. got the the information from Niels. Yes. I think that was the one thing, and the other thing is the primary gear which Pete helped us with. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was a. Uh, there was quite some structural challenges on that. Yeah. yeah. We just want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, THC, BNC Technologies, LNM Engineering and Rost Precision Engineering. Without you guys, we won't be able to do this. We also want to thank every one of you that has been part of this project. Um, so yes, let's get back to the video. We have to drive both the, the clutch hub and the balancer shaft system and there's very very limited space so that's another of the new technologies of the modern technologies that we're using is we're using wire erosion to cut the gears yes, yes. so the gears are near net finished uh, coming out of the machine then they get i don't know all the stuff peter so he's a specialist gear designer and and there was no space because the two gears are sitting like this next to each other the one is bigger than the other one and there's they sit right next to each yes, other and there yeah. was no space to to hop the one gear you can't wire erode it if you can't get through yeah so what Pete designed is a gear that press fits over the other gear and then it gets electron beam welded around so that and the one that is beam welded is the balancer shaft not the primary drive the primary drive is solidly mounted to the crankshaft Another quite interesting thing is because we had to move the starter at the bottom, this engine originally on the, the KTM 300 that we used, um, the starter is mounted on the left hand side on the top. So when we moved the starter to the bottom, we had a problem with the, to do the gear selection indexing, if I want to call okay. it like that. Yes, yes. Um, so that was the a problem. Detent. The detent, yeah. So it's, it's not a very complicated system, but there that's was one no of space. The, that's one yeah, of the yeah, areas right. where the 3D printing helped tremendously because this is a fully functional gearbox yes and you can shift yeah. the gears you can shift the gear uh, you can, can turn the crank you can do just about anything to with, it. with so the with the 3d printed with all housing the 3D printed uh, parts and gears and the crank and the casings and everything is 3d printed and the bearings yeah. are in the bearings so it's a yeah. it's a real bearing yes. this is version one so this is the starter motor non-functional <laughs> this is uh one of the casings, this is the other casing. And the reason why it looks like that is we ran out of that particular color plastic. <laughs> and these two buddies come together like this. You can see the case reed um, entrance at the back here. That's where the case reed goes in, which you can see on the engine there. Yeah. There's a version one of the crankshaft. I can imagine that's quite a task to get that printed. It's a lot of work because every bearing you have to check the fit. Yeah. So we made the fit, I don't know, 0 0.1, 0 0.15 bigger. Yeah. Because the 3D printer doesn't print exactly round. We printed it a slightly bigger, I smoothed it out of the sandpaper and then yeah, you press it in. Push it in with your hand. Yeah. Well, we, we had a, a good think about it initially. Rimpis has done some 3D printing, but he's, these casings are big. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, they're huge. Yeah. Invested in a 3D printer, it cost us. 15,000 Rand, which is the equivalent of less than a thousand dollars. We bought the machine, it's up and running, it prints beautifully, and we don't have to pay for it. So, after the, the initial investment, from there on, because we're also developing the other engine for the uh, Bonneville Salt Flats land speed record attempt next year, and that too is going to go through the same phases because. In that particular instance, we use a 690 KTM 690 yes. Duke gearbox, yeah. which is substantially beefier than this one. 
So it's a whole new, it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. You go through it. The, the thing that I can say also for the 3D printing, it's quite important how you print it because on the support side you get this weird support shape, so it doesn't print very nice. I so if this the, surface uh, is important to you, then you should turn it around like that. So the internals was important for us. Um, so just so just explain again. So this is the bottom. Yeah, so we print this it is, like this. This is the top. Yeah, this is the, the top. top. Okay. So it's the nice side. Yeah, All so right. it prints quite nice in yes. this configuration. Okay. The on this side, because that's a pocket, you have to have support. Okay. And you can see. So our printer is not a. It takes the support out afterwards. Yes, and yes. then it makes these. And so you it's can not see here great. As well, then, uh, yeah. Chuck, there's a good example of parts of yeah. the support structure. So it's, you, you so have to you think about it. You, you have, have to think, think about, about it. It's all engineering. Yeah. Yeah. So, Rimpis, one of the big things that makes a two stroke a ring, ding, ding, ding <laughs> is the exhaust pipe. Yes. To fit the 500cc single cylinder exhaust pipe on that must be. Must have been quite a challenge. What did yes. you do? Yes. Now I can I can show you. Niels van Ikerk helped us with the design. So we specified the length and the diameters. Placed it on a rod to his specifications. So how do you fit this thing? How do you build this exhaust? Because the people that hand built these things are, exactly. are my age <laughs> and they don't want to do this stuff anymore. So we came up with this plan. We made these discs. We laser cut the discs in 50 millimeter intervals tie them together with bolts at 50 millimeter intervals yeah I and then it, Rimpy yeah. set about bending this boa constrictor <laughs> so that it would listen so Rimpy show us that can it and fit it, yes, on the bike it can. I just want to say so putting on these little screws <laughs> <laughs> the nuts <laughs> I know yeah, because I the, nuts. The, Sorry, the, the piece of shaft is about a, a meter tall you know two, two foot tall, I, two I, feet used tall. The, I used the drill yeah but even, with the, <laughs> even drill, with the drill it takes a long time yeah. In keeping with the, with the whole plan of using as much technology as we can, you can see the white stuff on here, that's, <coughs> it's it just scanner. returned from the 3D scanner and they had to put that white stuff uh. on. So they scanned the whole thing for us and now the plan is that we're going to design on CAD section for section for section. Yes, okay. Design these, then hand bend them, tick weld them together then put them on the bike with this as a sample yes and then tack yes. weld them together and get the whole thing going and then once it fits weld it and voila let's make one thing very clear <laughs> we're not going to participate in the roof to win anything <laughs> except the everlasting admiration of our friends and families we're doing it this for fun mm. you don't think i'm going to win with the fun <laughs> <laughs> you're going to win my everlasting friendship which you already have my buddy um yeah, when, no, when so we get not, this it's, it's not if we get this running when we get this running it's going to be one of the biggest moments in yeah. our racing careers a lot of people do ask so what's the plan of 500 for the roof mm. so that's not it's it's not actually a roof bike yeah. Let's yeah it's yeah. not it's it, not the weapon of it's choice not for India. when you go to <laughs> the to, to the roof yeah. but this is, is just for fun. shits and giggles you know yeah. we do this because it's actually, we're from Africa, no. a little um, bit crazy. It's very exciting because we have very tight schedules, very limited budget, very high technical <laughs> challenges. But we've got the right team. Yeah. The nice we've got incredible right people, people helping us. Yeah. Um, the manufacturers, the designers, the um, technical experts, they really, really mm. are. Well, gentlemen, I think that's a wrap. If there's yeah. anything else that you want to share. Um, no. Oh! The, it's scheduled to start before end August. <laughs> Is that the sch before schedule? Okay. Yes. So that's, that's in a... That's about six, seven weeks from six, now. Yeah. Okay. So Rimpis has got his work cut out. I'm, I'm supporting him. So this is his design. This is his bike. Mine is in the wings getting some attention. Yeah. But that's a different story. All right. Thank you. <laughs>